All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Ram Martinez. I'm your GFB chair, and I'm here to talk about the uh, the changes that will happen with the GFB survey implementation uh, for this coming MC term 2021. So um, this is actually one of the um, one of the resources that we had sent via newsletter. So if you haven't seen it, uh, just check the newsletter for the links. But or you can just go to ice.x slash chart of accounts which is uh which is this one um this folder actually so just go here and then you'll find the 2031 chart of accounts anyway so for this video um i'm not gonna focus specifically on the chart of accounts because that had been already tackled in the previous video or webinars etc but i'm gonna talk more about the gfb survey uh parts because this is the one that will have more changes it's an easy change and i believe that once you go through this uh, it's gonna be a lot easier and you will find it um, a lot more um, faster in terms of how you're gonna do the gfb surveys um yeah so uh, we're just gonna go and skip to the slide of the ones that says gfb surveys so we'll start with format change then deadline change then implementation then submission sheet structure so in the GFB survey format change, so what were the changes? So as you know, um, there are two main uh, parts that is composed on the GFB surveys. One is the Google form and the second one is the Google submission sheets. So you can see here that back in MC term 1920, the information required, uh, wait, let me just put this. The information required monthly is general information, data submission check, finance standards. And then optional or basis need is pricing questions, special questions of the month, and extras, GCPs, um, feedback, etc. Meanwhile, for the submission sheet, it has all of the numerical data, which is executed data, budgeted data, exchange plan. However, for the for this MC term 2021, we're going to require um, lesser in the GFB survey form, whereas you can notice we remove the finance standards part and the pricing questions part but we move them to the submission sheet which are um, in here now in the submission sheet which i will show to you guys in a while and as you can see the exchange plan is removed so what are the reasons for this so first is the biggest change is the fine standards and pricing questions will be moved from the form to the google from the google from the form to the google sheets so the reason for this is because based on the comments people answer the same questions every month with the same answers and they are looking for a way to make it more efficient. So in if you don't know, um, answering the final standards questions is very long. There are, um, there are a lot of standards uh, questions in the Google form and it is quite repetitive that you have to do it every single month even though that you did the same thing that what happened last month. So by moving these questions to a monthly table format it will allow first easier reference on answers second is possibility to copy old answers because it's because it is through the survey uh through the uh submission sheet and third is faster adjustments for changes needed so let me show you um how it will work so if you're gonna go to this uh, folder which is the chart of accounts you just go to the submission sheet template um, take note that all of you will be assigned a submission sheet uh, as a, a submission sheet for your specific entity but the one that I'm showing to you is just a template so you just click this and then you will have this um, uh, sheet so the first two tabs is 2021 executed and 2021 budgeted so these two are um, basically it's the same submission sheet format as the one from last term um, the only change is the chart of accounts um, in terms of how to be able to answer them I will show it to you more later on but in the 2021 standards as you can see all of the questions are already here so there is a, they are categorized per standard so just scrolling down there are already categories per standard then all of the questions is already listed in here for the final standards there are some additional notes in case that there's a needed uh, description for these for certain questions 
and the way you're gonna answer them is basically all of the dropbox is already in here as well in the submission sheet um just note that this will be answered every month be careful with using cut or copy because you may um, there will be a possibility that you might change the formula of the sheet or you answered wrong because the options are different if you were to copy the answers from a previous month um, you can do so just be careful with copy function and do not write down anything that is not part of those uh, of the options from for those questions so yeah so basically if you look uh, you can see there's already the uh, there, there's already the drop down option um, also you can already notice that each has a conditional formatting so that you'll know if that will be like the right or wrong answer and each of them is not only just yes or no some of them have additional options as well so yeah so each of these questions have like uh, different options so that's pretty much easy and then you can just like copy this data if somehow you answered the same thing or you did the same thing for the next month etc um, basically also in uh, you have to answer all of them or every questions of the month until the end yeah so this will make it easier because in case that you did the same thing for the final standards compliance as the one from last month then it's gonna be easier for you to what you're gonna do in this month and then in terms of just updating it like it's simple updating by just going to the drop down and just being aware of it so yeah now next is that in terms of the exchange plan exchange plan that used to be required inside the google sheets will now be removed as there will be alignment with ai's goals collection as you can see here at the bottom um and then as you can see exchange plan is not in here anymore for 2021 pricing questions will be required monthly to be more accurate when entities change their price um the reason why we're gonna make the pricing questions on a monthly basis is because it is part of the questionnaires in the google form but we but we only require it uh, on certain times and there are times that we notice that people when they did some changes in their pricing they don't update us with those changes with their pricing unless we require we make the set of questionnaires required so we're gonna move the pricing questions to the submission sheet so that it's gonna be required as well it's gonna be easier to answer and it is on a submission sheet because as you know pricing questions is numerical data in uh any anyway, it's numerical data so it's it will be also efficient uh unlike in the google form and now what will happen to the google form so if this would change the Google Form questionnaire to be way shorter and will act as submission confirmation for all required data for the Google Sheets. If there is no Google Form submission, we cannot know if the entity is still in progress with their data inputs, planning to do further changes or finalize the answers. So we do need a Google Form more uh, with just lesser set of questions and it will act as a confirmation. Next is the GFB survey deadline change. So, um, as you know, in the GFB, uh, there has been a, uh, a legislation topic on uh, last IC2020, and one of them is to change the survey deadlines. So currently, the, er the deadlines are that early bird deadline is by the 10th of the month, final deadline is 18th of, of the month, and release of reports is last day of the month. However, based on what just been legislated last time, Early bird will now become 7th day, final deadline is 14th, and release of reports is by 20. However, because we know that this is a sudden change, because there is a lot of things that would go related to changes of the deadlines, there will be a change management period that will be implemented. So as you can see, this is the change management period where from July 2020 survey, which is August 18th deadline, to November 2020 survey, December 18th deadline. The following routine will be used to enable practice for the entities. 
early bird check of 7th day, 2nd week check of 14th day, and final deadline of 18th day of the month. Then, release of reports on or before the last day. However, we will aim to have it sent by within 20th to 23rd. So, all of the deadline of the survey is technically still at the 18th day. Uh, but we will change the early bird setting so we are still going to support the entities in case that they have some issues with legal or external reasons or need special alignment now what will happen after the change management period there will be a full implementation from december 2020 survey which is january 14th deadline onwards where the proposed routine will be 7th of the month 14th of the month and 20th of the month Next is GFB survey implementation. So this is how will the survey timeline is gonna look like in terms of the submission sheet. So in the submission sheet, there will be MC and LC executed data, MC budgeted data, LC budgeted data, final standards and pricing data. So on a regular basis, um, MC and LC uh, executed data, final standards and pricing data will always be uh, required in the submission sheet, but in the first two there will be some special changes So this is a zoomed in version of what is uh, happening in terms of the surveys right now, so This uh, this table is only go uh, to cover from May 2020 survey to September 2020 survey now from until the end of MC 1920, which is the one we until July 2020. So before that, we still use the 1920 chart of accounts. This would give time for MC MCVP 1920 and MCVP 2021 to discuss the changes and how to do survey without immediate change in the short of period of time. So because as you know, around May, June, July, that's like around the time where transition happens. So within this month, MCs would be able to introduce this, the changes in chart of accounts. Next is in terms of June to July 2020 execution, by July 2020 survey, we are going to ask the data um, from, from June and July 2020 survey, which is two months that will be submitted by July survey. The, using the new 2021 chart of accounts, mainly because of the new products. In case there was some revenue or cost or exchange that happened by those products within June to July, um, as you know, the officially the new products uh, operated by June 2020, so that's why um, it get so that's why there will be two months to submit by July 2020 survey. Uh, wait, sorry. So MC 2021 budget is this um, which is going to be required by July 2020 survey um, by August 2020 to July 2021 which is 12 months so this the MC budgeted data will be required during this time however the LC 2021 budget before it was set to be required as a Ju in July 2020 survey of August deadline but it will now be moved to August 2020 survey of September deadline. The reason for this is based on the inputs and discussion with AI and some entities because of how the LC planning and OD timeline works. It was requested to move this requirement a month later. So we are going to move it uh, a month later. So that means MC budget will be required for July 2020 survey, which is August deadline. And LC budget will be required by August 2020 survey, which is September deadline. Um, final standards will now operate in the sheets, which is going to be in uh, starting this July 2020 survey. Google form will still be there to act as submission confirmation. And pricing sheets as well will start by August 2020 survey. The reason why we put the pricing sheet to start by August 2020 survey is because we know that the sheets might take some time to get used to and people still need like maybe some time to be able to uh, find out what are the answers that they need to write in there especially especially for entities who are running GTA or GTE because those um, those ICX prod, uh, pro products 
are the ones that have more complex type of structures in different entities. So that's why the pricing will be required starting August 2020 survey, which is September uh, deadline. And then after um, after that, um, the normal executed data starting August 2020 survey uh, as well um, will be just per one month of data instead of like two months of data, etc. So that will be like the change. Now for the submission sheet structure. So first is that a um, 2021 executed. So in the submission sheet, you will find it in different parts. So around the top is the entity information. The these two side these two columns are the GFB accounts coding and description, and then at the uh, in the middle is where you're gonna have to write down your inputs. In the questionnaire, in the GF, uh, sorry, in the GFB accounts description, there are some notes to the contract accounts, so that you'll be able to know what they are. And if you scroll more to the right of the sheet, you'll find the accounts definition. Yeah. At the bottom, all the way to the bottom, you will find the totals as well, specifically for MC accounts and LC accounts in revenue, cost, and assets, and I built this in equity format. Yeah. Now, in this sheet, what are the things you need to identify? It's mainly this part of the sheet, which is, now let's take a look, which is around this one, this line. You need to take note of this line where it needs to say that all accounts are balanced. Also, at the bottom, you'll be able to understand what is happening uh, as the indicator if the account says they are balanced and, <clears throat> and if contract accounts are normal. So, contract accounts are normal if they are neg if they are in negative and if they are not in negative that means it is not normal so just take note that you'll be able to identify if your submission um, uh, if the submission of your data is like correctly formatted in based on this row and this row basically now for the 2021 budgeted so 2021 budgeted only requires the revenue and cost part. So we're not going to require the asset and liabilities and equity part, unlike the one in the executed. So as you can see, the format is pretty similar as the one in the executed data, and also similar as the one in here in the in this row and the one at the bottom. Yeah, so you is pretty similar as well. The only difference is instead of the word balance, it will say the word filled. Yeah. So in terms of answering the tab A and tab B, so basically you just write down the numbers and the and the inputs. If it is a contract account, just take note it is it should be a negative. Um, answer this part first, which is did you separate MC data from your LCs plus expansions data? Meaning, did you submit only MC data because you are a small entity or did you submit an MC data and LCs and LCs data because you have LCs so you just answer if yes that means you have MC you separate MC and LC data and and then um, and then just make sure that you answer all of the columns and yeah you'll be able to know that this is filled okay 2021 standards so it's the same thing as i already mentioned before the way that you'll be able to know if all questions are answered are the these specific rows as you can see the ones with the yellow bubble so going back um make sure that the ones in on the top says all questions answered and the one at the bottom says these numbers so these num these are the number of questions per category okay and next is the 2021 pricing so this will take some um, getting used to um, but it's pretty easy and quite organized as well so 
in terms of to knowing if all questions are answered it's pretty similar to the standards one where you just have to check the one at the top and at the one at the bottom as well so you just answer like then uh so you just answer all of the numbers uh, uh all of the fields or the cells of that column specifically and just make sure that this one will say all questions answered uh, oops, sorry just make sure that this column this part here will say all questions answered yeah so how will you answer this so for example um the first thing is uh the first set of questions is ogx so ogx is just put in the one tab uh, in one set because all of them are pretty easy to it is the pricing structure um so the first set of questions is which currency do you use for pricing for this product this question specifically will be asked to all product uh, to all products because we notice some entities would charge one currency on like a, on gv and then the next is that they would charge another currency on like let's say gt uh, on global talent um, this usually happens like that uh, usually happens if um, this country has the option to use two currencies in their country so just to be safe we will make it like that um, so if you click the drop down you can already find all of the currency lists here if you don't um, have if you don't run the product or if you don't have any pricing on that um, then you can just click not applicable and then next question is how much do you charge for this product if so just write down the number and then if you don't run the product then you just uh, all you have to do is write zero and then this will apply to all of the the OJX products IGV is pretty similar yeah, IGV is similar. Um, the only difference is you can charge IGV partners and IGV EPs. Now for um, global talent and global teacher. So the thing here is that um, there are different types of questions in here. So I will just explain the short term one because this part, this will be applied to other things as well. Yeah. So the first question is, which currency do you use for pricing the, of this product? So if you do run this, um, just choose the currency. If you don't, then don't. Um, add, if you don't run it, just choose not applicable. Next is, which fee structure do you have? Then there are four types of questions, which is first is option one, fixed installments. Um, option two is one-time admin plus multi servicing fee. Option three is other structure. Um, in case that you do other structure um, option four is not applicable so in um, in most of the time most a lot of entities will choose option one or option two so um, if the, that is the case then if you if your pricing for this is option one is fixed installment so if you charge one or more fixed installments at different stages how much do you charge for this product at each charging stage so uh, let's say you charge the if you only charge one fixed installment let's say if you only charge it at approve then you just write it here and um, and then write zero um, write zeros on the other parts but if you do charge fixed installments on more than one um, charging stage like let's say you charge 500 during the sign up or open part and then you charge 500 on approve oops then you can do it like that and then if you do charge option one it's kind of assumed that you don't do option two as well then you can just write the choose not applicable on the options then you just write down zero and zero and then na uh, which is one of the options if that if the other structure doesn't ap apply anymore yeah but what if you do option two which is one-time admin fee plus monthly servicing fee 
then that means you have to answer these questions which is which stage do you charge the one-time admin fee so just basically just choose which one of these then write how much do you charge at that one uh, one-time admin fee so let's say the f you charge the admin fee at um, sign up then how much do you charge let's say 100 um, which which stage do you charge the monthly servicing fee um, usually this is at realize so let's say realize and how much do you charge uh, how much is the monthly servicing fee let's say 20 yeah so that is just the option the um, we're only asking how much is the monthly servicing fee because as you know the products is already divided per duration so we will already know how long each duration is and we don't need to ask anymore how many months do you uh, receive the monthly servicing fee because the product is already divided per duration and if you have other structure for the pricing that is not applicable to the above options um, and you need for or if the inputs from above options need further explanation please write here so you can just write down the full um, explanation of the pricing in here and then um, the the rest you can just write not applicable or zeros um, it is ex ideal that you talk to GFB first um, before answering in this one because what if the way that your thinking your own structure can be applied with the other structures instead yeah and then so that's how you will answer this part um, and then that's the same set of questions on IGTA and IGTE yeah and then you'll be able to know if everything has been answered if this part here says all questions answered and uh, yeah, so this is the same explanation that I already mentioned. So the fee structure has the fee structure. If you charge fixed installments right here, if you receive admin fee with multi servicing fee right here, and then if you have other structure or need more details, um, you can write here. You may consult GFB if needed. And that's it. Um, for any questions, contact GFB at GFB Chair, which is me in this email and number, uh, WhatsApp, uh, or GFB TL control system which is Ab, uh, Abdel Rahman or Abdoksh and um, this is the email and this is the whatsapp number and yeah thank you guys so much if you have any questions just let me know and see you uh, see you I wish to see your submissions and responses in the next survey thank you bye bye